I agree, that was amazing. You guys did a fantastic job. Thank you to all of our musicians. And my name is Chris Dowd, I'm a senior pastor here at Christ United Methodist Church. And it is truly a, an honor and a pleasure for our congregation to be hosting. Uh, while you're here over the next couple of days, uh, I'm told that color is goldenrod on the shirts. They're yellow, the volunteers are all around. We have so many of our church members who are uh, helping host this week. So just ask one of them if you need anything. We're glad you're here. Please rise and join with us in our call to worship. May the face of the Lord shine on us and on all creation. We dare to give his thanks to God's steadfast love. With own voice, we offer our gratitude for God's living hand. Even in the face of challenging times, we rejoice as we turn to you in this hour of worship. We find the Spirit in your presence, our rock and our refuge. We celebrate for your service in your steadfast love. Bless us as we gather to worship, to remember, and to look forward to the future.
2023 North Texas Annual Conference, family and guests, the Spirit of the Lord is with us this evening. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we gather here this day to worship, to worship with grateful hearts, to worship with hearts that understand that we have depended upon you on these days of our lives. We have turned to you when we've needed strength, when we've needed encouragement, when we've needed hope, when we've needed grace, and we have found it in you abundantly, more than we have ever needed, individually and collectively as a church, we have journeyed through this year looking towards you, fixing our eyes on Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith, holding on to each other, trusting that you are going with us and ever before us. And today, Lord, we just stop. We stop to look back at the mountains and the hills that we've climbed, at the challenges that we have overcome by your grace. We stop to look back to remember those, Lord, who are no longer with us, who have gone on to the church triumphant and who have entered into your promised rest, and we give you thanks for their lives. We pray that today that your spirit and your promise of comforting those who mourn would be made true to the family members who are still remembering and grieving and, and giving thanks for these lives that have not just affected and touched theirs, but have affected and touched and influenced the world through their ministry. We praise you and we thank you because you're a good and faithful God. And you are always ready, more ready to respond than we are ever ready and willing to ask. But today as we gather as your people, Lord, and we look back, we also give you thanks for the present. We give you thanks for this opportunity to be here and to worship as your people and to, and to celebrate who you are and who you have made us to be. We also look forward with hope, trusting that you're already way ahead of us, waiting for us, inviting us to step forward in faith and hope and love. And so, Lord, let this beginning of this annual conference be a celebration of your grace and your mercy towards us in Christ Jesus and in the power of the Spirit. May we walk out of here inspired and renewed and restored and revived again to do the amazing work that you call us to do and the amazing work that you have before us. Let your spirit rest on every song, every prayer, every report, every business action item, every conversation in the sanctuary and out in the hallways that we may be, Lord, just saturated by the atmosphere of your grace because we are your people. And Lord God, you... You invite us to join you in this holy work. So today as we worship, let our worship be holy unto you, that you may be honored and glorified out of the gratitude and the depths of our heart. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Please be seated. As we gather to celebrate the ministry of the North Texas Annual Conference, our past, our present, and our future, we begin by honoring the clergy and spouses of clergy in our connection who have passed away since we last gathered. In a moment, we will read their names and see their pictures. These are persons who devoted their lives to loving and leading God's people, and we are better people for having had their presence with us. Let us pray. God of our ancestors and ages past, Abide with us as we remember, as we name, as we grieve, as we give thanks. With each name, may we praise you for the gift of your child. With each picture, may we celebrate the story of love you wrote with their life. As we gather together as a family of faith, may we do so reminded of the great cloud of witnesses upon whose faithfulness we now stand. In this shared spirit, we remember Reverend Dr. Joseph L. Allen. Pastor Billy Bill Eugene Brown. Mr. Thomas Lee Bruff.
Mrs. Janie F. Calvert. Mr. Robert Curtis Clark. Reverend Stephen J. Cotton. Reverend Joyce Cravens. Reverend George David Dunson. Mr. Richard J. Englert. Reverend John R. Fraser. Reverend Carlton Robert Hasley, Jr. Pastor Lonnie Hawkins. Mrs. Barbara H. Howard. Reverend Dr. William B. Hutchinson. Reverend James Dell Keith. Mrs. Mary Jo Crone. Pastor Karen Harris Martinez. Mr. Cody McMahon. Mrs. Athelie Tally Moore Bush. Reverend Mother P. Owen. Reverend Dr. Thomas Redmond Peel. Reverend Richard Gary Regan. Mrs. Margaret Robinson. Mrs. Patty Ann Shaw. Mrs. Alice Smith. Pastor Daniel Solis. Mrs. Wanda B. Stoffer. Reverend Leonard Charles Stovall. Reverend D Donald W. Waddell. Reverend Ramon L. Womack. For the lives of these, your saints,
United Methodist. We are connected through a shared ministry born of a shared faith. As we open ourselves to what God is doing next in and through the people of North Texas, let us rise in body and spirit as we proclaim our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. <clears throat> to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, <clears throat> to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified, risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, and life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we prepare to offer our gifts to God. Who we are as United Methodists is revealed when a tornado touches down in Jacksboro, Jack County, Texas, with some 25% of the households in that city, homes affected or destroyed. And it quickly becomes clear that UMCOR's experience and resources, combined with the heart's commitment and dollars of the North Texas Conference would be the difference maker in ensuring that everyone got home again safely. This is who we are as United Methodists. Since then, many volunteers from churches represented here in this annual conference have arrived in Jacksboro to make a Christian difference in that community. This is who we are 
as United Methodists. Through UMCOR's $1.4 million grant, we've been able to hire on seven staff to oversee the recovery and work with contractors and volunteers. This is who we are as United Methodists. And when on Tuesday afternoon, the Jack County judge, the mayor of Jacksboro, and the chair of the Long-Term Recovery Committee of Jacksboro join us as we give our CMO report, I would love to be able to tell them that we are going to finish the job because this is who we are as United Methodists. And now please join me with the offertory prayer. God of all creation, giver of every perfect gift, we offer our thanks for this life and its gifts. Bless these offerings and those given outside this time of worship. May our contributions here and in every part of our lives, our time, our skills, and our money, work towards a world of justice, holiness, and peace. We pray that it be so through the ministries of this annual conference and through the work we do together. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
I am, I am Ruben Sines Jr. and I have the honor and the privilege of being assigned to serve as bishop for the North Texas Annual Conference and the Central Texas Annual Conference effective uh, January the 1st. And so I've been here now for the past well, six months, five months, and I've, I've really been blessed as I've gotten to know so many of you in your context for ministry and so many of you on the conference staff and, and throughout the, uh, the annual conference. And as, as, we, as I began the work in January, the order of business was, let's get these appointments done and set. And so I've been working with both cabinets in that work to ensure that I understood the churches uh, their missional context, their, their need for a clergy, and then assign the best possible clergy with the gifts and graces to help the church fulfill its mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. As time went on and January moved into February and February moved into March, I started to, to get my mind around the annual conference. <laughs> and uh, it comes faster than sometimes we, we know. And I started to think, I said, you know, it would really be difficult to call on another bishop to come in and open up our worship service, because I know most bishops started on January the 1st, and they probably were experiencing the same type of, of, uh, of work situation that I was. And so in consultation with the cabinet, with both cabinets, I asked them for names of persons who they recommended would bring a fresh perspective and a hopeful vision for the future. And both cabinets and extended cabinets provided me with some names. And I looked at the names and two names that kept coming up on both lists were the name of Derek Jacobs, who is a pastor at the village here in Dallas, and Esti Valendi, who is also a co-pastor at Keller United Methodist Church and so one of the things that both of them have in common is that they are the order, uh, they're, they're chairs for the order of elders for both annual conferences. So after further consultation, I, I said, hey, what would it mean, what would it be like if the North Texas Conference sent an emissary to the Central Texas Conference from the order of elders, and the Central Texas Conference sent an emissary to the North Texas Conference to open up our, our worship. And so I said, yeah, that's a great idea. And so I called uh, Reverend Derek uh, Jacobs and uh, Reverend Essie Valendi, and I, I said, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Since, since I'm bishop over both annual conferences and we've already met as a clergy in January and we've met as a combined cabinet several times from January through now, uh, I'm thinking about inviting Derek to preach at Central Texas and Essie to preach at the North Texas Annual Conference. And they were like, you couldn't choose two better people to do that. And so they were both gracious enough to accept the invitation. Now, Derek Jacobs preached last week at the Central Texas Annual Conference in Waco. So uh, Derek, where are you? Raise your hand so we can see who you are. They're right there, he's right there. And, and he, he preached, are you ready for a new season? And he had an amazing and inspirational message that helped us kick off the annual conference. And so now Esty's going to bring the word for us tonight. But before I, I, I have her come up, uh, Esty has got some friends from the Central Texas Conference who are here tonight to support us. So if you're from the Central Texas, would you please stand so we can recognize you? These are your siblings from the conference next door. Yeah, and I'm sure I saw, thank you. And I saw Reverend Philip Rhodes here and, and others. Um, uh, Esty is, uh, well, Jason is married to Esty, Reverend Jason Valandi is married to Esty. Where's Jason? Where's Jason? There he is right there. Jason is Esty's husband. And, to, and together they have two children, Jude and Evan. Um, they're, they both co-pastor Keller United Methodist Church. Uh, as I mentioned, Esty is the chair for the Order of Elders. She's received preaching awards, and she's also taught at Perkins. And so let's give a North Texas Conference welcome to Reverend Esty Valendi. Esty.
invite you to rise in body or in spirit, join together our voices as we sing together. Try it in Spanish. <laughs> and then join together in English.
You may be seated. Would you join me in an attitude of prayer? God of wisdom and truth, shine your eternal light on us this evening as we prepare for the receiving of your word. Open our minds to the wonder of who you are. Flow through our hearts so they may all beat as one. Stir within our souls so that we might be forever changed. In the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of your Holy Spirit, Amen. If you are able, please stand for the reading. And I'm reading from Psalm 27, beginning at verse 11. Lord, Teach me your way, because of my opponents, lead me on a good path. Don't give me over to the desires of my enemies, because false witnesses and violent accusers have taken their stand against me. But I have sure faith that I will experience the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Hope in the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. And so greetings to you, my friends. I miss you, Belindy. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. I bring you greetings from Keller United Methodist Church, where I serve. And I bring you greetings from the Central Texas Conference, of which I am a member. Um, I, we had our conference this past week, as Bishop shared, and so we know something of the eagerness and, and the anticipation of what it means to come together for opening worship and to be among our clergy colleagues. Um, once again, I'm so grateful for my clergy colleagues who are here to support me tonight um, and to those who are watching online. There's a lot who are watching online. They've been praying for us. Um, all morning at my church this morning, people were telling me, good luck, I hope it goes well, and I said, pray. At 7 p.m., you're gonna be praying. So they are covering us in prayer, my friends. It's a delight to be with you. Um, last week, indeed, we had a wonderful conference in the Central Texas Conference. Derek Jacobs, you preached a powerful word. You brought strength to our conference, and it is um, intimidating for me to follow in your footsteps. So. Um, Thank you again for what you shared. Bishop, once more, thank you for your kind introduction. Thank you for your leadership. We are grateful to have you here. I am um, honored and humbled to be before you tonight as an, what did you say, an emissary? An emissary, an ambassador of the goodwill of the Central Texas Conference to you, an extension of our friendship and our love and our connection. And so, will you pray with me? Good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be a delight to you. We thank you, God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I invite you to picture a tropical coast. In your imagination, can you get a picture of a tropical coast? What do you see? Tropical coast, do you see palm trees, sandy beaches, waves crashing against the shore, colorful fish swimming in crystal blue water, a place that we'd love to be right now, wouldn't we? Tropical coast, you can see it. Nearby, these iconic images, which quickly come to our mind, however, is another part of the ecosystem that we often overlook. But it's an element of a tropical ecosystem that you could say is critical for the health of the entire area. It's called a mangrove forest. 
Mangroves are trees and shrubs that cluster around coastlines. They are an incredible species. They're remarkably tough. They're adapted to live in intertidal zones, which is a mix of saltwater and freshwater. So they straddle two worlds. Mangrove forests and uh, mangrove roots grow in a tangle, intertwined and interlocked with each other. They form a dense thicket above the waves that serves as a, a break for, for waves. They pre present, uh, prevent erosion and flooding. They're incredible barriers in the tropical area. The harsh conditions that mangroves live in would kill most plants, but mangrove forests not only adapt, they provide sanctuary. Over three quarters of all tropical fish are born there. Monkeys and birds and all kinds of insects find refuge in mangrove branches. Critically endangered and vulnerable species call these places home. Finally, one of mangrove forest's biggest strengths is their ability to capture and store carbon. Their incredible carbon sinks. They, they suck, sequester carbon from the air, they push it through their roots down into the mud, and so it's estimated that mangrove forests sequester 10 times as much carbon as tropical rainforests. So they're incredibly valuable in the fight against, fight against climate change. Okay, that was the science lesson portion of this sermon. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not here tonight to give you a science lesson, but I do think these are fascinating. And most importantly, I'm telling you about mangrove forests because I think they can be a guiding image for us as we reflect on our call to strength and courage as the church of Jesus Christ in this season of the life of the church. The theme of this annual conference and the scripture for tonight is it announces that call to us. Be strong, take heart, Hope in the Lord. I admit that when I first heard those words, I thought, well, those are powerful words. I thought that they were words directed to an individual. Something you'd say to build somebody up. Something you'd say to encourage someone. Kind of like what I would say to my uh, teenage son who runs track. What I'd say before a track meet. You got it, buddy. Get out there. Be strong. Take heart. Do your best. Go for it. You know, like, go get him. It's kind of a cheer. But the more I've reflected on these words, and I have prayed a lot about this theme, the more I don't think that these are words directed to an individual at all. I don't think that they're words that are just meant to build up a solo strong man. Instead, I think they're words that come out of an individual's experience and they're spoken to a community. They're meant to build up a people. Be strong, take heart, hope in the Lord. These are words that are directed to a community. The psalm writer is speaking out of the context of their experience out of the experience of opposition. I don't know if you caught the, the pieces that came before. The psalmist rehearses a litany of what they've been through. False witnesses, violent accusation. The psalmist has felt discouraged and, and knocked down and betrayed and sinned against. But somehow, by the grace of God, the psalmist has come through that experience of opposition and come out on the other side with this sure faith that allows them to stand in front of their community and say with confidence, be strong, take heart, hope in the Lord. Friends, I wonder if there are those among us tonight who feel a bit like the writer of Psalm 27. In this season of disaffiliation, some of us have had to contend with false witnesses, with violent accusers. We've been betrayed by those we thought were friends and allies. Pastors, we can look back and see churches that we've loved and served, and they've left. Lay, fo lay folks, we know it's a similar experience for you. Friends, a disaffiliating hurricane with some gale force winds took a 
a pretty big hit on our shores. And we're hurt, and we're grieving, and we're weary. And as I have prayed and prayed about what to share with you tonight, the word that kept coming to me is that we don't have to stand strong all alone. You are not on an island. You are not a solo little church shrub out there getting beat up and battered by the waves. We're part of a forest. And not just a forest of individual tall, strong trees. We're so much more like a mangrove forest. Interconnected roots, a communion of the body of Christ that we call the United Methodist Church. And our strength doesn't have to come from ourselves, from pastors and lay leaders doing it all alone. Our strength is found in that interconnection in the intertwining of our relationships with God the Creator and the Redeemer and the Sustainer and with our United Methodist brothers and sisters in Christ. Before I researched mangrove forests for this sermon, I did a lot of research on you, the North Texas Conference. I did. I needed to know about you. I needed to kind of know what was going on with you. Although I'm from a Central Texas conference and we're next door neighbors, we still don't know each other that well. That clergy connection day we had in January was a great first start. Needs to be a lot more like that to begin to bring us together. And so what I did was I reached out to a few people that I met at clergy connection day to hear from them. And then I asked them, who else do you think I should call? So I I had a number of Zoom calls with pastors and lay people in this conference to try to get to know you, to know what challenges you're facing and, and where you're seeing signs of hope. I was pretty intimidated at the thought of coming to preach to you tonight. But through my conversations, that intimidation just melted away. There is great kindness among you. You are a loving people. The Zoom conversations that I had were such a gift to me. So thank you for those of you who took time to speak to me. Here's what I learned in my research. I learned that there are beautiful stories about the connections in your conference like a mangrove forest that supports a whole ecosystem, yours is an ecosystem of diversity and faithfulness, inclusion and creativity. You have rural churches that are innovating, that are listening for what God is calling them to do and they're acting and they're taking risks and they're doing new things. You have large churches, large church pastors specifically, who care deeply about all of the churches in your conference. You have urban churches that are places of refuge for the vulnerable. As we recover from the battering of the disaffiliation hurricane, I I heard stories about how churches are coming together to share strength. I heard about two churches in Sulphur Springs who are collaborating in new ways after this storm. There's a new sense of connection with each other, and they're they're leaning on each other as they haven't done in years. I heard about Market Street UMC, which I'm sure you're going to celebrate well together, where lay leadership from two churches who had disaffiliated were able to see and act on the new thing that God is doing among them. Do you know this about each other? Do you know the beauty of the diversity that's swimming in the tangled roots of your connection? Do you know the strength that is possible when the roots of your connection are interwoven through collaboration and support? Yes, the waves might pound against us still, but we are stronger together than we are alone. In one of my Zoom calls, Edgar Bazan said this very well. 
Edgar, he's here somewhere. He's a, he's a pastor among you. Uh, he's also a member of the Future Foundation team, which you're going to hear more about um, later in this conference. Edgar and the Future Foundation team have spent a lot of time discerning the values of your conference. They had uh, listening sessions with over 400 clergy and lay people. And so out of those listening sessions, this is what Edgar said. He said, when we talk to each other, we learn that we have a lot in common. When we don't talk to each other, we think we are divided. In the talking, we realize we're more united than we think. We have one spirit. Friends, this is a beautiful new day to start talking to one another again, to start connecting in ways that we haven't before, to, to recapture what it means to be connectional. We use that word a lot. It's our heritage. It comes from John Wesley. But what does it mean? And what can it mean in this new day that we're in? It's a beautiful new day to, to reframe how we relate, to prioritize talking to one another, supporting one another as we haven't done before, to share strength, to draw upon our communal courage and stand on common ground. Pastors, do you know how if you have a sermon in your head, you've been thinking about these themes for a while and then you start to see it everywhere? You know, I mean, this has been my sermon. When did you call me? In March? I've been thinking about this a long time. <laughs> so one um, connection that I made in my reading was a book that I really highly recommend to you. It's called Tempered Resilience by Todd Bolsinger. Uh, resilience, of course, is a buzzword in our culture right now. But what Bolsinger says is, is that what's overlooked in popular resilience books is how often resilience is the result of relationships. So here's a quote from that book. He's actually quoting a Duke divinity professor named Kevin Rowe. We often think of resilience in individual terms. This or that person is resilient. But start talking with resilient leaders and soon enough, you will see that someone hoped for them in a time when they couldn't get back up. Resilience, in this understanding, is a communal practice, the fruit of a common life rooted in hope itself. Resilience is a communal practice. That's the good news in a nutshell. For me. Resilience is a communal practice, and that's good news that we as United Methodists should easily claim as our own. Resilience is a communal practice. We who were birthed out of Wesleyan uh, class meetings, those small groups who got together to share how it is with their soul and, and bear each other's burdens, they knew what it meant that resilience is a communal practice. Friends, can you relate to the experience of someone hoping for you at a time when you were knocked down and you couldn't get back up again? What did it mean to you to know you weren't alone? I've had that experience, and some of those people who are there for me are sitting up here right now. And I tell you from experience, it's a life saver. It's a ministry saver. You don't have to do <laughs> ministry in this day and time, pastors, I'm talking to you. This is near impossible, what we do. Why did we ever think that this has to be something we do all by ourselves? The writer of Psalm 27 had a confidence that they clung to as they endured the battering of abuse and dissension. The writer of Psalm 27 said that they were confident that they would experience the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. For me, in this new day in the United Methodist Church, the land of the living is our connection. The land of the living is in this room. This is where we see the Lord's goodness. With these colleagues, 
and these friends and these partners in ministry who are sitting beside us. They are the land of the living for us. Through their lives, we see God's grace. Through the stories of their loyalty, we see God's faithfulness. God has not deserted those who are in the land of the living, and God will not desert us either. Seeing each other's strength, seeing each other's courage, gives us hope. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, may God inspire your imaginations to see this conference not as a bunch of little solo church shrubs getting knocked around in the winds and the storms, but to see yourselves as a mangrove forest that stands sentinel together to harbor hope and life. May we celebrate the diversity of God's children who find refuge in this connection. Again, like a mangrove forest that's home to many delicate creatures, we praise God for the places in this annual conference that are home to the vulnerable. May you see them. May you lift them up. May you protect them through your shared strength. May we thrive as we inhabit a world where few institutions can survive. Remember how mangrove forests straddle both worlds of salt water and fresh water. Can we inhabit a similar place in our culture? We who swim in the waters of personal and social holiness, can we transcend the dualisms that hold us back? Traditional and progressive, red and blue. Can we thrive in the brackish waters of our culture? Can we be truly inclusive? of the right and the left. And while we do that, can we remove toxicity while we offer that space? Remember that, that mangroves sequester carbon. They suck that which is toxic out of the air. Can we proclaim mercy in the toxicity of disdain? in our world? Can we proclaim forgiveness in the toxicity of resentment? Can we be that place? Finally, may we move toward one another so that our roots intertwine and intertangle. I invite you in these next two days at this conference, take an opportunity to move toward each other. Be intentional. Talk. Listen. Practice vulnerability. Be curious. Ask your partners in ministry what's really been going on with them this year. And then share with, with some honesty when they ask you to do the same. Offer to pray for one another. May the roots of our relationship enter twine. And as we move toward each other, may you pay special attention to those who've been knocked down this year. Do you know a pastor or a layperson who's had a particularly difficult season? Will you take this time to seek them out? Listen to their story. Thank them for their perseverance and their endurance. Bear witness to the fact that they are still standing. They are still here. Bear witness to their trust in God. Bear witness to their resilience and their confidence in God's faithful presence. May those among us be an embodiment to us of the writer of Psalm 27. Someone who came through the experience of of false witness and accusation, but who says with confidence, standing before their community out of that experience, they can say, be strong, take heart, hope in the Lord. Friends, we are not alone. Be strong, take heart, hope in the Lord, for God is with us. Be strong, take heart, Hope in the Lord. Praise God for the gift of this connection. Be strong. Take heart. Hope in the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Thank you for taking us up to the realm this evening. Friends, are we at church? Yeah? Are we ready for a phenomenal end? Are, are we seeing the goodness of the Lord among the land of the living? Yeah, well, we're seeing more of it right now in these young people that are back here working in our churches, changing lives, modeling what it means to be a, a good mentor, a uh, role model for these young people. Friends, today we recognize the ministry of these young people and commission each of them to a special task in service of Jesus Christ. Each person gathering before us, and many more, will be serving in our local churches with our camping ministries and community partners throughout the summer. My brothers and sisters in Christ, today we give thankful witness to the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of these persons gathered before us. By the water and the Spirit, they have been made new creatures in Christ. In the Spirit and with, the body, and with this body of Christ, they have discovered their gifts for ministry. One young man just told me that he had a call to youth ministry. I said, boy, do we have an opportunity for you. <laughs> connected with a passion for service that God has placed in each of their hearts and heard God's specific call to offer their gifts and passion in the work of God's kingdom across the communities of North Texas. Lift up your hearts and hands and voices. And glory are yours now and forevermore. Friends, in the name of this congregation, I commission you to this work and pledge to you our prayers, encouragement, and support. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you that in this and in all things, you may do God's will in service to Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. I invite you to stretch out your hands for these young people. We're gonna bless them right now as they go forward in this work. We're praying for you, okay? You come from different parts of the country. You thought it was just a job opportunity. God called you. God's got something in store for you. God's gonna use you. You're gonna inspire a young person this summer. And you know what? Not only are you going to bless their lives, they're going to bless your life. You're never going to be the same. Don't forget this moment. This is a holy moment. This is a life-changing opportunity for you and those that you serve. Some of these children, you're the only person that's going to pay attention to them this summer. When you sit down with them and you read to them, you may be the one that's going to help ignite their spirit and their imagination so that they can be readers and then be leaders and then be servants in the world they are going to change it. You all have dreams. You're in college. This is going to be part of who you are. And whatever you do and wherever you go, make sure that you look out for the well-being of the most vulnerable among you because God's going to put you in different places where you're going to be in the medical profession, business, economics, agriculture, I don't know where God's going to take you. Communication, maybe even the jobs that don't even yet exist. But you're going to be there. And this is going to be part of who you are. Let us shape you. Open your heart to what God asks for you. And one thing we know about the Lord, He'll show the way. Lord, thank you for these young persons who have given up, uh, who, who have embraced this opportunity. Some of them come from local places near. Others have traveled from different states to be here. They, they're sharing and they're, they're forming community. They're, they're strengthening each other, encouraging one another, making deep friends that'll last a lifetime, helping to touch and shape young lives that'll forever be transformed. They'll move on but their work will, will create a trajectory that will bring life and flourishment and good opportunity to so many. 
And so, Lord, in this sacred season of their lives, let it be a holy season, a season for learning, a season for being curious, a season for allowing their hearts to to be open to your possibilities in their life. We, we know that what you have in store for them is more than they can imagine for themselves. Surround them with a community that will encourage them to achieve their, their fullest potential in you for the sake of the world that you so dearly love. And Lord Almighty God, look with favor upon these persons who today we reaffirm their commitment to follow Christ and serve in God's holy name. Give each of them courage, patience, and vision and strengthen us all in Christian vocation of witness of, to the world and service to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. 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 Thank you. Let's give them a hand. We see the benediction. I will sing. I will sing mercy. Every day.
yet what we're gonna do we're gonna be strong wait be strong take heart hope in the Lord we start tomorrow at 8 a.m. have a good night's rest we have a reception God's grace and peace be with you may the love of God the peace of Christ and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always amen for the reception.